The new ProTaper instruments represent a revolutionary progression in root canal preparation procedures. The basic series is comprised of three shaping and three finishing instruments. Let's look at the shaping files. The auxiliary shaping file, or shaping X, has an overall length of 19 millimeters, providing excellent access in restrictive areas. This SX file has a D0 diameter of 0.19 millimeters, a partially active tip, 14 millimeters of cutting blades, and a D14 diameter of 1.2 millimeters. The SX has a much faster rate of taper from D0 to D9 as compared to the other two shaping files. For example, at approximately D6, D7, D8, and D9, the instrument's cross-sectional diameters are equivalent to 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 1.1 millimeters respectively. This file is used to optimally shape canals in shorter routes relocate canals away from external root concavities and to produce more shape as desired in the coronal aspects of canals in longer routes. The SX file provides many advantages over Gates Glidden's and other coronal shaping instruments used today. Shaping files number 1 and 2 have D0 diameters of 0.17 millimeters and 0.20 millimeters, partially active tips and their maximal flute diameters approach 1.2 millimeters each. Additionally, each shaping file has 14 millimeters of cutting blades. The shaping files have increasingly larger tapers over the length of their cutting blades, allowing each instrument to engage, cut, and prepare a specific area of the canal. Shaping file number one, or S1, is designed to prepare the coronal one-third of a canal whereas shaping file number two, or S2, enlarges and prepares the middle one-third. Although both instruments optimally prepare the coronal two-thirds of a canal, they do progressively enlarge its apical one-third. Three finishing files have been developed to address the obvious variations in cross-sectional diameters that canals exhibit in their apical one-thirds. The finishing instruments have D0 diameters of 20, 25 and 30. Between D0 and D3, they taper at rates of 07, 08, and 09 respectively. From D4 to D14, each instrument has a decreasing taper which increases flexibility. To improve its flexibility, finishing file number 3 has a reduced core as compared to the other pro taper finishing instruments in the series. Although these instruments have been designed to optimally finish the apical one-third, they do subtly and progressively expand the shape in the middle one-third of the canal. Generally, only one finishing instrument is required to prepare the apical one-third of a canal, and the one selected is based on the canal's curvature and cross-sectional diameter. A unique feature of the shaping files is their progressively tapered design, which clinically serves to significantly improve flexibility, cutting efficiency, and typically reduces the number of recapitulations needed to achieve length, especially in tight or more curved canals. Additionally, a progressively tapered file engages a smaller zone of dentin, which reduces torsional loads, file fatigue, and the potential for breakage. Another unique feature of the ProTaper instruments relates to their convex triangular cross-section, which reduces the contact area between the file and dentin. This greater cutting efficiency has been safely incorporated through balancing the pitch and helical angles. This combination of engineering features helps to prevent the instruments from inadvertently screwing into the canal. All the ProTaper instruments effectively auger debris out of the canal, and generally, only three ProTaper instruments are required to produce a fully tapered canal that exhibits uniform shape over length. The ProTaper instruments may be utilized in gear reduction electric handpieces at 300 RPM in accordance with universally recognized guidelines. The selected electric motor should afford torque and consistent speed control. Advancements in electric motors provide clinicians with the ability to choose the desired RPM and torque control for each specific instrument. Other guidelines include 
frequently cleaning and inspecting the instruments, only using them in a wet, well-irrigated and lubricated canal. Never force the instruments. Work them only to light resistance. It is critical with the ProTaper system to have exact working length determinations. The goal is to minimize contact with the periodontal ligament. And finally, when you take any ProTaper instrument to working length, take it only one time and work the apical area for no more than one second. Otherwise, you run the risk of transportation. Let's look at the ProTaper technique. The following animation will demonstrate the instrument sequence in a calcified and moderately curved canal. As with any endodontic technique, good straight line access to the orifices is necessary. Following access, the pulp chamber is filled brimful with either sodium hypochlorite or a lubricant such as ProLube. We will focus our attention on a single canal in this animated lower molar. Let's begin the procedure by exploring the root canal space utilizing a stainless steel number 10 hand file. This instrument is gently fed into the canal using a small back and forth motion. When the handle is snug, pull and cut out of the canal. Repeat this motion and work the 10 file passively and progressively until it is a few millimeters short of the estimated working length. The 10 file gives us information regarding the cross-sectional diameter of the canal. If its handle is positioned on or off the long axis of the tooth, which indicates the appropriateness of the access and the anatomy of the root canal system. Next, we use a number 15 hand file. This instrument follows the pathway previously established by the number 10 hand file. The 15 is used in a similar manner as the 10, carefully, delicately exploring and slightly expanding the glide path through the coronal two-thirds of the canal. Before using the pro tapers or any rotary instrument, irrigate with sodium hypochlorite. We will start the pro taper sequence by selecting shaping file number one, which has a purple ring on its handle. The arrow indicates a coronal ledge which should be removed for better straight line access. To accomplish this, employ a brushing motion with the shaping files. The S1 will passively follow the previously established glide path, moving apically to just short of the depth of the hand files which preceded it. Remove the S1, clean and inspect the file. In this example, we'll reinsert the S1 to continue shaping the coronal area. Work to about the same depth, employing a brushing motion to improve the access. This is accomplished when light resistance is encountered, by withdrawing the instrument and cutting the dentin on the outstroke. In more difficult canals, it may require a couple of recapitulations to enlarge the coronal two-thirds of the canal. Now, irrigate. Go back in with the number 10 hand file to break up debris and then re-irrigate. Once we have finished our pre-enlargement procedures and have great coronal two-thirds access, we then use a pre-curved number 10 hand file to negotiate the rest of the canal and establish patency. A curved number 15 hand file follows to working length. This is also a good time to reconfirm your working length. Often you will find that your efforts to move the canal orifice can affect your original measurements. When the canal is patent and has a confirmed working length, then we can use shaping file number one to length. This instrument will generally move to length easily since we have a smooth, reproducible glide path to the terminus. Always allow the pro taper instruments to progress at their own pace. You should never force any rotary files. Following the use of S1, irrigate, recapitulate, and re-irrigate. Shaping file 2 or S2 has a white ring on its handle and is the next instrument used. This file will typically go to full working length on the first pass. Again, take your time. When your working length has been reached, remove the instrument from the canal space. There is no need to spend additional time in the canal. Following its use, irrigate, recapitulate, and re-irrigate. Now that the coronal two-thirds of the canal has been optimally prepared, the apical one-third can be finished. 
The finishing file number one has a yellow ring on its handle, which designates that its tip diameter is equivalent to a 20 file. With the canal flooded with irrigant, carefully take the F1 to the working length. The finishing file's decreasing taper feature comes into play here, concentrating the shaping action in the apical region and minimizing coronal shaping. In this animated example, this is the appropriate size for the apical region. Here is a look at the protaper instruments at work in a lower molar. Though there are four canals in this tooth, we've edited this procedure to focus our attention on the mesial buccal canal. The protaper instrument should always be used in a wet canal space, but for the purposes of this instructional CD, we've edited out much of the irrigation and lubrication scenes. Every endodontic case begins with proper access. A straight line to the canal openings is essential to successful endodontic therapy. With complete access, we can explore the canal. Start with a number 10 hand file. The hand file will alert you to any calcification or cervical curves which may not have been apparent in your pre-op radiograph. Gently work the hand file a few millimeters short of your estimated working length. Follow with a number 15 hand file. These instruments are confirming a glide path which will allow the protaper instrument to follow and efficiently shape the canal space. Again, instrument short of your estimated length. The first protaper in the sequence is the shaping file number one or S1 instrument. The S1 is a very safe instrument for intentionally moving a canal opening away from furcal danger. This is accomplished by using the instrument in a paintbrush manner. See how we engage the canal wall on the upstroke, taking a little dentin with each pass. Passively work the S1 progressively deeper into the canal until you reach the same depth as the hand files which preceded it. Protapers are very efficient instruments, therefore they should be removed from the canal space to be cleaned and inspected. Importantly, cleaning the blades improves efficiency and additionally serves to minimize the stress being placed on the instruments. Use your small hand files to explore the rest of the canal, then confirm working length, establish patency, and verify the glide path. Your goal is not to cut dentin with the hand files, rather to confirm space is available for rotary files to follow. With the smooth, reproducible glide path in one or more passes, the S1 should reach working length. Make sure you have a good finger rest and never force these instruments. Avoid the tendency to lean on the handpiece if the going gets tough. This should instead be an indication to remove, clean, and inspect the instrument. Irrigate and recapitulate with a small hand file after the S1 has reached working length. Shaping file 2 or S2 is next. Again, the goal is to passively allow the instrument to work to length. Like with the S1, a brush stroke motion can be used with this instrument. The S2 has multiple tapers and is designed to perform the majority of its cutting in the middle one-third. After carrying the S2 to length, irrigate and reconfirm working length. Finishing the canal shape in the apical region is next. The finishing files present three options for apical size preparation. Begin with the finishing file number one, or F1. This has a 20 tip. Carefully work it to length and remove. To determine the actual size of the apical foramen, we gauge with .02 tapered hand files. In this canal, the 20 hand file is somewhat loose, so we will move to the 25. This instrument is just snug at length. In this instance, we'll use finishing file number two to increase the deep shape in this canal. If the 25 is loose at length, proceed to the F3 to create a fully tapered shape to the terminus.
Following the use of the F1, gauge the size of the foramen by simply dropping a 20 hand file to length. If the 20 hand file is snug at the working length, then the canal is optimally prepared and ready to obturate. If the 20 hand file is loose, then proceed on to the rotary finishing file number 2. This file has a red ring on its handle. This designates that its tip is equivalent to a 25. With the pulp chamber filled with sodium hypochlorite, carry the F2 to length. Following its use, gauge the size of the foramen by placing a 25 hand file to length. If the 25 is snug at length, then the canal is finished and you're ready to obturate. If the 25 hand file is loose at length, proceed on to finishing file number 3, which has a blue ring on its handle. Carefully carry this F3 instrument to the desired working length and then gauge the foramen with the 30 hand file. Normally this will be as large as you would prepare a small curved canal.